Now say this with me, I will not illegally scrape any website with the things I learn in this video. I had a client that asked me to build an AI chatbot for his WhatsApp business based on his e-commerce products. It was all fine until I asked him for the access to the products database. He stared at me for some seconds and said, well, I use the shared hosting platform. And the problem with this shared hosting platform is that it basically blocks remote MySQL access. And while I could whitelist the server's IP, there were more issues behind the data I needed. And it was all too complicated. Scraping would be the way to go. The client's website had some default bot blockers that made it a bit more difficult to scrape. And because of that, in this video, I'd like to show you ways you can scrape data from a website while bypassing some anti-bot systems, just in case your client's data is a mess, despite the front end being neat. And since this channel is focused on AI building, we will also use Qualcore AI to fetch the data structured beautifully by using the local DeepSeq model. So I get why the majority of people would search for a video like this. Either they want to scrape social media or a website that requires login. And I really don't want to incentivize that. So what I did was create my own website and it has a lot of features that would prevent a bot from scraping it. And if you are a code bro and you're looking at this, you might be thinking, well, this isn't like the ideal form of preventing scraping, uh, like rate limiting. I'm, I'm instead of using Redis, I'm using the server's local memory and all, but you guys get the point. This is really just to test how the system would work. So inside this website, I implemented five different ways to prevent scraping. The first way was using reCAPTCHA. So it's placed there in a way that the, this text and also the, the dynamic table will only show after the reCAPTCHA has been validated. Some scrapers just stay on headless mode and they don't configure the agent. And if you don't do that, then your fetch will include like the headless inside of it or a bot, maybe like depending on which framework you're using to, to perform the fetch. And many times a website will identify that inside of the user agent. So I did that too. It redirects the users to the block page if so. Then as you can also see here, I'm restricting by geolocation. So you won't be able to access the website from the United Kingdom because then you'll get sent to the block country route. I've also placed a rate limiter. This isn't used in Redis, as I said, it's just a, a local way to identify like in a span of 10 minutes, the, did the user access the website like multiple times. And after the user accesses the website for the fifth time, then it just restricts the access. And we can test that right now just by F5ing the website. Yeah, <laughs> United Kingdom is blocked. And why is that? It's because I'm connected through a VPN in the United Kingdom. So if I deactivate that and try to access the secure path again, it will open up just fine. Then F5 again, opened up third time, fourth time, fifth, it will open. And now it should block my access. Yeah. So that's, that's a simple rate limiter. And obviously a website wouldn't block your access after five times you, you fetched it in 10 minutes, it would probably block your access after like the hundredth time that you're trying to access it in a minute. And ideally you wouldn't want to do that, right? Unless you're trying to DDoS the, the website. So again, you promised me this in the beginning, you won't use this to do anything illegal, right? Now let's open the actual scrapers. Uh, I have a simple scraper and then the scraper on steroids, which is using crawl for AI along with a pretty cool proxy. And for our simple scraper, we're using Puppeteer. And as I said in a previous video, that should be enough. Like for 90% of cases, you can scrape a website just using Puppeteer, Selenium, or Beautiful Soup. Just with Puppeteer, you can get past two of the problems we had earlier. One of them is the user agent. And the way we bypass that is just simulating an actual real user. And you can simulate that easily with just this line of code. And also in this line, we're disabling the automation flags. These automation flags normally comes with the scraper and they kind of tell the website it's a bot accessing them. But with this simple line, you can deactivate that. As for reCAPTCHA, what it tries to do is find an actual user inside of the page. So a bot would move differently from a human being. My mouse, if it's right here and I move it straight down to this line, it won't be a straight movement. As if it were a bot, it could directly go from this coordinate down to this in a direct line. And like, since human aren't able to exactly do that, the bot will identify that it's not a human there. Puppeteer can solve that by default, or you can just build a random function that moves the, the cursor around randomly, and then maybe the recapture won't detect you. So at this point, we bypassed a lot of things. Just by using Puppeteer, it defaults like out of the bat, it does a lot of things. And along with that, we can implement things like this that guarantees that we can access the website. But for geoblocking and rate limiting, that involves our IP. There's no best way to get past that than using a proxy. 
I understand that sometimes I receive comments like these, but for some problems like these, companies like Evami really comes in handy. Back then in the story of the beginning of the video, if I'd used this residential proxy from Evami, I calculated that fetching every 10 minutes, every day, every week of the month, I would have up to just $2 of expenses every month. And along with all the features a proxy like Evami can provide you, you even have the security of not accessing the website with your own IP. And you'll notice that that will really help you from avoid being blocked by that site on your own IP and not being able to access it even through your browser. So heading over to Evami's documentation, you'll see that we can integrate them with what we're using right now, which is Puppeteer, Beautiful Soup, Playwright, Selenium, and also we'll integrate this proxy with crawl 4 ai just in a bit. Integrating with a proxy is something really simple, but Evami's dashboard just makes it really intuitive. So you can set the location settings right here. Let's select Brazil for now. Down here is the most important step to guarantee that you don't get picked up on rate limiting. Earlier today, there was a comment in one of my videos on which the person got a rate limiting error, and that would not have happened if they were using this. Down here in the expert settings, you'll have an ad lock toggle, and you'd want to toggle on this ad lock, especially when you're feeding the data to an LLM. I don't know if you've ever used speedtest.net, probably to test your internet connection. This is how using a proxy would make it look. Now let's move all the way down to the mode. The quality mode is what guarantees that you avoid captures as well as can access websites with strict anti-bot measures. Because honestly, what I did here was just a rookie way of trying to block bots. There are a lot of different apps and tools that people will use to try to block these bots. So what this code is going to do is run concurrent requests. It's going to run seven requests over to that website. Uh, first, not using proxy, and then you'll see that it will be able to bypass capture as well as the user agent blockings. But above the sixth request, it will start blocking it. As for Ivami's proxy, it won't block it. And it'll also show the IPs going from the country that we selected. Yeah, so I'm running this with bun. It's first testing it without a proxy. Yeah, I surpassed the rate limiting, probably because I was already visiting the site some minutes ago. Yeah, now with the proxy enabled and the country selected being Brazil, you see that it goes through different IPs for each call and then it successfully brings all the information. If I change my IP over to the United States and start my VPN and then run this again, you'll see that the, the, the search without proxy might fetch, not might, it certainly will fetch five requests successfully, but then two of them, as you can see here, will be blocked because the rate limiting was exceeded. Now, here's the thing. I want to scrape this table and get it back in a structured way. The trick is that if I have five this, and you'll see that uh, one HTML tag here is figure, then address, then fig caption. If I update it, it was those HTML tags. Now we have summary, output, and details. Now if we F5 again, you'll see that we have a div. So every single time the HTML tag is changing, and I acknowledge that we could try to scrape it from the styling or some other variable or, or from the position, like we, we understand that there's only this table in here and not necessarily would we need to use an LLM, but there are cases where maybe I wouldn't even know that I want, wanted to get to this exact website and, and the crawler just found it, and then it wanted to scrape it. In those cases, you would not know the structure. And if you want more details on this, please check out my video above. And also, if you try out this code, you have to get this string right here from Evami, go over to the environment variable, place proxy URL, and just place it right here. The code will identify your user, your password, and just proceed with the proxying. For my scraper on steroids, I did it a bit differently. So yeah, the only difference is really, I get the string, I get the, the, the initial part of it. This is the server. You can also find this information right over here. Yeah, so username, password, host name, port. Yeah, you can get that all up there. Just place all the information inside of this proxy config dictionary. This will be sent to the browser config, which will then be sent to the web crawler, and then you avoid being rate limited. So proceeding on, let's just Python main pi and let crawl for AI do its job. This is what it brought back to us. And if you copy the exact message it retrieved, get a test JSON, place that in there and then format the code. And that's it. It's completely structured. You got it despite it having some strange HTML tags, like you could, you could scrape this. You might be questioning, well, I had some expenses because I'm using the OpenAI API key here. And that's where Olama comes in. To use DeepSeek locally, you'll just have to head over to Olama, download it. Now head over to either your CMD or your terminal, type in Olama, pull DeepSeek R1 working B. 
and wait for it to be installed. You'll notice that we changed the provider to olama slash deepseekr114b and we've removed the API token since we're running a local model. While that is downloading, let me give you guys some insights on how you can crawl or scrape a website that needs some credentials. So a way that websites use to identify if you're logged in is through cookies. And if you find your cookies in here and inspect, you go over to application, you'll find a bunch of cookies right here. This is for like this particular website. So in there, you'll find some strings that you can pass over to your code, either if you're using Puppeteer, Selenium, or Crawl for AI. And then it will interpret that session and continue logged in while it's scraping. So it kind of simulates that you're already logged in because it has the session of the login that you've performed previously. So that's done. It already pulled DeepSeekR 114B. We have that configured in there. Let's run our code. This might take up to a minute. And for real, I wouldn't recommend using this for production, like a llama DeepSeekR 114B. It doesn't have a high capacity of solving pretty easy things. And it might take a while depending on your GPU. Okay, it's done. And this is what it brought back. So let's copy that and send it over to our test JSON. It actually got even more than expected. So if we head over to the website, you'll see that we have all this scattered around the website. It got everything. But I suppose that's more because of my prompting. The more weaker the LLM is, the more specific you need to be. So it just comes down to just optimizing this prompt. It would probably have got it correctly. That is it for today. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then.